So gym member to you, joined by head coach of Team Carbon, Colin Heron, ahead of uh, Darren Till's UFC welterweight title fight coming up on September 8th when he'll take on Tyron Woodley at the American Airlines Arena in Dallas, Texas. Sir uh, Colin, you brought the team out here to uh, the UFC Performance Institute a week ago. How, how's training been going for the last, few, the last week? Or? Couldn't have gone any better, to be honest. Evans come into place, we've got the right people around us, right facility around us. His weight's coming down nice and slow and steady. I mean, it couldn't have been better, couldn't have scripted it better. Fight came around very quickly. Um, would you have liked more time, I guess, to plan for this, or, or do you think you just had just about the right amount of length of training? I always want more time, but in hindsight, that responds better to short camps. Obviously, biggest fight's clear. I probably like the next four weeks, maybe prep, or I'm just being fussy. Uh, I think sometimes you've got to run with it. So when the opportunity comes knocking, you've just got to grab it with both hands. And like I said, he was responding really well. The short camp it means to get straight in, straight in, nice and intense, very focused, nothing distracting him. You know, there's only going to be one outcome. Obviously, um, you know, Team Carvon, you've brought pretty much the whole lot out here. A lot of bodies for Darren to work with. Like, you know, was that a real kind of important point for you and Darren, bringing everyone out here, bringing that team camaraderie, and still having that, I guess, for the majority of the camp? 100%. Uh, if we couldn't bring them with us, we wouldn't be here anyway. I would have stayed at home in Liverpool. But we were lucky enough, fortunate enough to get it sponsored and bring the, the full team out. People that have been with them from the start of the journey. See, I'm a big believer in team and one for all, all for one. This title is not just for Darren, this opportunity is not just for Darren, it's for every individual. They're all suffering with them, you know, they sacrifice them with them, they sacrifice work, family commitments, the body. There's, if you look around the room, there's a lot, of, a lot of war wounds, so they're going through a lot of pain. So this is for everyone, not just me, not just for Darren, it's for every single individual team member. You guys are all at the, uh, you're all in the same house at the moment. What's that like being, I guess, living in the same kind of space for like the last week? Is, uh, is it starting to get wear a bit thin, or are you guys still kind of nah, know, it, getting on as a team? It's good. We're all still getting on. Obviously, there's, there's bodies everywhere. <laughs> there's food everywhere. There's, you know, it's a bit of a mess, but you know, camaraderie is important, and it's, we're all eating together. We're all training together. But you know, we're, we're, we've got enough space when we need it. But you know, I think it's important that. We, as like you said, the camaraderie, it, it's ever, especially with the sport. It's an individual when you get the, the, the Ottoman door lock, but up until that point, it's a complete team sport. And we're totally immersed with each other for this camp. You know, only one outcome, we all want the same thing. Every single one of us focused on that belt. It can only go one way. And that's kind of what everyone's been saying to me. I spoke to the guys very quickly yesterday, and no, no one's even contemplating a, a, any other result apart from Darren winning this fight, of course. Like, you know, when, when you kind of assess his teammates and, and their belief in Darren, is that something that they've always had? They, did, you, did you guys always believe he would be a world champion one day? Yeah, definitely. He's, he's told us often enough, he's told the world often enough. Everything he says, it's kind of happening. Uh, everyone's watched him develop, that's the thing, behind closed doors. Most of the world sees him in a fight, we see him develop daily, how quick he's learning. How much stronger he gets fight by fight, camp by camp how his game's getting tweaked, small little things are changing that are going to make a huge difference, especially in this fight. You know, so people, they're enjoying the journey, his development as a team and stepping back and enjoying it, I think. Tyron's been the champion for a while now, a fair few years. Has he been someone, I guess, when, when you've been looking at Darren's path to the belt, is, has it always been in the back of your mind that it would be Tyron that he does face? And like, What sort of challenges do you think Tyron kind of brings to Darren as a champion? Yeah, definitely expecting this fight obviously we thought it would be Woodley who's going to face there's a lot of problems you know experience it's like you just said he's been very dominant for numerous years he's fought everyone and everyone but I think sometimes it's just about timing and he's 36 now being inactive I'd focus elsewhere outside of MMA maybe he's tasted an easier life better way to make money less pain maybe he likes that a bit better and now he's got this young 25 year old animal that doesn't know any other thing but go forward and knock people out. Is he ready for that now at this stage of his career, at this stage of his life? Uh, so I think the time's on our side, the short camp's on our side. Age is a big factor now. I think Dan's super sharp, super fast, his reflexes, his distance. Evidence on point, so Mr. Woodley needs to worry about Mr. Till a little bit more. For sure, and um, you said there, you know, obviously he's 25 years old. 
like are we approaching his best or do you think that's still you know far along in the future like some some people don't I guess get to the the peak of the mountain until they're in their 30s we're nowhere near approaching his best mentally I don't think he's going to alter he's always going to be he's been like that from an amateur to now that's never altered physically we don't like I say we're making small adjustments fight by fight camp by camp as well as obviously improving them between fights most fights he's been actually injured for we've not been able to play with a lot of the things we'd like to play with so when we can it's his arsenal's going to expand by another maybe I don't know 60% and that's a scary prospect an exciting prospect this fight is pretty good we're able to play with a lot more of his tools so I'm hoping we're going to see a lot more of that come fight night uh, but uh, we've got another three years before we even scratch anywhere near Darren being at 100% you, know, you were saying there, obviously, the weight is coming down well. There's going to be a lot, a lot of questions, I guess, in the next 14 days or 13 until weigh-in day. Like, is everything going to plan? Are you, are you happy with where he's at right now? I know he's got a nutritionist that's come in. Yeah, 100%. It's coming down steadily. We don't want to, we're not going to panic and strip him completely off. He's, we've still got a heavy workload ahead of us. But he's, exact, he's actually a, a week ahead uh, for the Cerrone fight already. And that was as easy as got to date. And like you said, we've took all the distractions away. That, um, he spoke a little about being distracted, things interfering with the actual cut. That's gone now. So we, we're just back on track. So people need to stop worrying about the weight. He's going to make weight. He's going to weigh, weigh comfortably. He's going to be replenished. He's going to be 100% come fight night. You know, without giving away the game plan, I guess, for the fight, how do you kind of see this one playing out and how, how do you see it ending? It only ends one way, and that's a KO from Darren for this one. He's been he's been doing that daily in the gym. Um, it's a it's a game of distance, obviously. Two imposers, and who's able to play the distance game the best? Darren's a master at. Maybe Tyron's going to maybe underestimate him a little because he won't have felt the heat. I know he's felt pressure fighters before, definitely, but it's very rare you get someone with a full combination, i.e., pressure intelligence, speed, sharpness, power, mm. killer instinct, that's what you've got in Darren, so I do see an early night for us, I think, first two rounds, he's going, he's going to overreach, he's going to make a mistake and Darren's going to capitalise. People said, like, when this fight was announced, everyone was like, oh, you know, we've seen this fight a few times already because Tyron's fought Wonderboy, but it, where, where, what are the kind of differences in, in the two that, that you think and that you see in the way that you know, you were saying there, you think this is going to be an early night for Tyron? Completely different fighter, Till and Wonderboy. I mean, what you've seen with the Till Wonderboy fight was us not being cocky, but showing the world that Darren can out Wonderboy with Wonderboy. Everyone was expecting a strike and war, it was not really in our heads. It was about now we show a different Darren Till, an intelligent, patient, mature Darren Till at 25. I think that's exactly what he'd done. Uh, you know, he's frustrated with Wonderboy. Wonderboy's a massive frustrating everyone else. So, and we also wanted to give people another problem to think about, about how do we prepare, prepare for Darren? Is he mm -hmm. going to be that walk us down, try and knock us out? Is he going to be cerebral? So, we've seen a lot of different Darrens each fight and purposefully we've done that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's hard to prepare for and people don't appreciate his size until they're until right, standing right in front of him. And then he uses it so well, he's so imposing, and he's a master of the head games. Um, I'm really looking forward. I'm excited as a coach mm. because I've seen how much he's come on this camp. Uh, he's, he's, he's always been very accurate. Now he's even more accurate. We, we do certain specific drills to work on that, and he's not missing. Not missing a beat in each drill. Even now at this stage, we're at a little bit of a slight calorie deficit. Energy is high. Time is super high. I know you had a sneak preview last night. You've seen a little bit of pad work. You know, he's on fire. He's on fire. So there's, there's no doubt in anyone who's been a part of this camp of mind. It's an early night for us. Uh, and you know you said a bit there like as for you as a coach like you had so many great nights with Terry as well previously like but for you is, is this kind of a bit of a defining moment for you you know UFC world title fight yeah to be honest sometimes I forget that it actually is because mm. every time I prep a fighter in my edit the title biggest always mm. so this camp no different to his last camp yet but sometimes I sit back this actually is for the belt this actually is the biggest stage in the world and yeah well, if I sit back and took took a little moment to take it all in it is definitely the biggest point of the gym biggest point in my career 
trained many, many champions. It's 35 mm. years now teaching in every combat discipline. So I've ticked all the boxes I need to, to, to tick in the striking world, the kickboxing world, the boxing, the Muay Thai world. Okay. Any major organization I've been part of, I always had a champion come out of it. So now, MMA, this is the pinnacle, USC, World's Weight Championship of the World, definitely the highlight of my career, I think. Mm. And I'm sure I'm going to experience it again as well. There's for a sure. lot of up and coming fighters coming through. Yeah, for sure. And like, just speak to me a bit about Team Carbon as well. Like, you were saying at the start of the interview, camaraderie is a massive thing for you. Like, what are the kind of the core principles of the people that step inside of your gym? You throw on that T-shirt. Like, what do you kind of want to see in the eyes of those guys? You know, when people f people first come, it's like they got to ask themselves, do they really want to be in it? Because I know everyone talks about. There's a lot of stories. I'm an extreme coach, definitely aggressive, nasty, can be. But I'm very good at what I do, and I have a certain way of doing things. Now you come and try it, if it's not for you, it's not for you. But if you get through them first early stages of the intense training, being pushed a little more than you've ever been pushed before, and you can hack it, then okay, I'll start working with you a little bit more. Then when you prove yourself that you're loyal, and you're prepared to give yourself completely to the team, not just me, so you're there for absolutely every single person who's fighting, then you got me for life then, then I'll work with you for t till the end of the year. I'll take you as far as you can ever possibly go, 100%, but I'm very particular about how, how, how many people let get to that stage. Because I've been doing it a long time, so I sometimes might have had a match. 45 professional fighters was not unusual at one stage in the early days. It's too much. Too much. It's hard to get quality out of that. Yeah, excellent spot and good rounds. But Obviously, you can't get around that many fighters. So now I'd much rather have a smaller group and be a lot more picky about who I allow into that group. Mm. Because I've experienced everything I need to experience, I've done everything I need to do. The only one thing left for me to do is UFC belt. We're working on that right now as we speak. So there's no need for me anymore to, to bring a thousand people in and to advertise for 30 or 40 professional fighters. I don't want it. If you come, you're welcome to come. If you get past the stages and you do everything I like, and you're loyal and part of the team, then you're welcome to join the team. But I don't go poaching, begging, asking. I've never invited any fighters into my, my gym in my life. You'd be surprised how many people I've knocked back this last three weeks. I get maybe five, six emails daily from people all around the world wanting to come. I say, not just yet, thank you, maybe ask again in a couple of months and then, you know, I'm very particular. Just lastly, how, how far can Darren go? Like, how. You know, he's fighting for the welterweight title in two weeks' time, but everyone talks about him moving up in weight. Like, what are we looking at here? Like, where do you kind of see his ceiling? Dan's 25. He can go as far as he wants right now. I mean, if he stumbles, if he falls at 25, so what? So what? He's got loads and loads of time ahead of him. He's not even fully grown yet. So, he talks about three belts. If he talks about it, he's probably going to do it, to be honest. Uh, yeah, he's definitely obviously he's going to move up weight at some point. It's you know. No problem with the weight this time, I don't think. It's going to be very, very easy looking at him. Um, he wins this belt. We'll have to sit down and talk about him. Definitely going to defend, obviously. Not an issue. But I think he's definitely got a side set on a middleweight belt as well. So maybe, anyway, maybe he pushes for that next. Who knows? But what that entails puts out there into the universe, that until seems to get. And the next thing is going to get out so is on September 8th, then UFC 228. Colin, um, thanks for your time today. It's, it's great to get, I guess, the inside track on Darren's camp. And uh, thank you for allowing me to kind of get a perspective as well. Very no much problem at all, mate. You're welcome.